Shalom, Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli Loot News Live. We have a very serious breaking story that, uh, that has just come out. Uh, this is, by the way, available on the Vatican's uh, website, and I'm going to be bringing that information for you as well. Uh, this story is courtesy of Lynn Leoz. Uh, we happen to know Lynn. Lynn's done a number of stories uh, uh, about some of the things that we've reported on before. And uh, Lynn is reporting here, and before it's news, Pope Francis makes a law, destroys every corporation in the world. Uh, we were a little bit late coming on with our friends here on live stream, and we apologize for that there. We need to uh, thank the TSA uh, and their kindness for their inspection process, because somehow or another, the, the one computer that we had to load on board, which is our, our tower computer that runs a lot of our live stream programming, uh, as soon as we plugged it in, it exploded. Uh, it didn't just do a little snap, crackle, pop, it exploded. Uh, so thank you, TSA, for uh, rigging my computer uh, that, that it would not work any longer. I guess you guys just don't like what we're doing. And so anyway, nonetheless, let's, let's go on to some other... Uh, uh, to the important information that we are here that I want to bring to your attention now. Uh, this, as you're watching here on your screen, if you're on live stream, you'll be seeing this as well in, uh, um, on YouTube there. Pope Francis makes a law destroys every corporation. Lindley Oz wrote, put this article, article together. Uh, said the Vatican created a world trusting using the, uh, excuse me, created a world trust using birth certificates to capture the value of each individual's future productive energy. Sounds a lot like, like Hitler in Nazi Germany, if you ask me, uh, if he's making a trust to, to determine our productivity of our future um, energy. Uh, each state, province, and country in the flat monetary system contributes to their people's value to this world trust identified by the SS, social security number, uh, which is kind of interesting, right? SS, uh, the SIN or EIN numbers. Um, they're maintained in the Vatican registry, corporations worldwide. Individuals became corporation fictitious, uh, fictitious through their birth certificate. And by the way, you may not be aware of that, it's something that we've been aware of for quite some time, that if you have a birth certificate, you are a corporation, a corporation nonetheless that is owned by the Vatican. Uh, and this is why all those churches that are 501c3 corporations as well, you are owned by the Vatican. So the Vatican has made a trust for you, and they're going to determine your, uh, your product, product, productive energy level here. Uh, let's continue on in what uh, Lynn writes in this article. Uh, she states here that, uh, um, that the... Uh, the, let me get you guys where you can follow me on live stream here. Through the law, okay, as, 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 as through money, Vatican birth accounts, uh, values to IMF, to Treasury, Federal Reserve, and to banks, to people, loans, to judges, administrations, and sheriffs, uh, confiscations. Um, now, one thing you might want to think about when we look at this right here, and that is when, he, when she mentions here the IMF, um, that is something that really caught my attention as well. This is who determines what the world standard currency is, which the U.S. has always been the reserve, world reserve currency uh, noted by the IMF. Uh, but I have a feeling, since the Vatican is getting so involved in this, that the currency that may come out in the near future may be Pope dollars. That'll be an interesting take, wouldn't it? Because clearly the Pope of Rome is actually exercising his complete authority over every government in the world. Recently, uh, we mentioned to you briefly in the news the other day about how the Pope Francis is actually was having a meeting. Uh, he was having a meeting of mayors from around the world, and uh, they were sitting as if they were sitting inside the UN. And of course, he was sitting as the head of the entire organization there, showing his supreme uh, supreme authority over them. Now, keep this in mind as you're watching this, especially for those that are watching on live stream, you know, you guys have looked for a world leader. You have been looking for an antichrist to come on the scene that would exercise as a world leader. And so many people try to tell me, well, Pope Francis is just a false prophet. He certainly is not the antichristo. He's not the antichrist. 
uh, the Antichrist is going to be a political leader. I keep hearing, hearing this all the time. Well, uh, and, and I can't say for sure what Lynn's thoughts are on this when she wrote this article, but I can guarantee you one thing. If you don't wake up and recognize who your political world leader is after reading this article, then something is severely wrong because the Antichrist is right in front of your face, the anti the uh, Antichristo, being the word anti, is literally in Latin would be vicar. Uh, it is a placement or a substitute. That's what the word vicar means in the, La in the Latin language. So if you were to translate Antichristo uh, to Latin, you would have to say vicar of Christ. Okay, so I hope that makes that clear. The Pope of Rome takes that title upon himself, the vicar. Actually, I think the way that it's supposed to be pronounced is vicar of Christ, or the uh, vicar, vicarious, uh, 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 vicarious uh, philae dei, which is the Latin word, which means instead of the Son of God, or in place of the Son of God. And, uh, and he is definitely exercising world domination over everyone at this point here. Uh, so we go on to read here. It says here, uh, judges, administrations, the birth trust account in, in court matters favoring the court and the banks acting as the presumed beneficiary since they have not properly advised the true beneficiary of their own trust. Judges, attorneys, and bankers, lawyers, lawmakers, law enforcement, and all public officials, servants are now held personally liable for their confiscation of true beneficiary homes cars, money, and assets, false imprisonment, deception, harassment, and conversion of true beneficiary, beneficiary trust funds. Now, it says here, the importance of the motto propia Pope Francis, according to the New Advent Catholic Encyclopedia, motto propria in Latin stands for on of his own accord. That's very important because that's the way he has titled this article here. It's of his own accord. And it is the name given to the official decree by the Pope personally in his capacity and office as supreme sovereign pontiff and not in his capacity as the apostolic leader of the, uh, and teacher of the universal church. To put it more bluntly, a motu propria, uh, is the highest form of legal instrument in, uh, on the planet in accordance to its proven, uh, provenance, influence, and structure to the Western Roman world, overriding anything that could be issued by the United Nations, the inner middle temple. You guys need to, I hope you're listening up on this on live stream. This is definitely not a joke right here. This is serious. Uh, the temple, the crown of Great Britain, or any monarch, and indeed by any head of state or uh, body politic. If you are a member of the United Nations or recognized by the United States or the United Kingdom or have a bank account anywhere on the planet, then a moto propria is the highest legal instrument, no question about it. Now, she didn't put the word about it in the article, but that is exactly what that means. In the case of the motto propia issued by Pope Francis on July 11th of 2013, it is an instrument of several functions and layers. In the first instance, it may be legally construed to, to apply to local matters or administrations of the Holy See. In the second instance, the document relates to the fact that the Holy See is their underpinning to the whole global system of law. Therefore, anyone holding an office anywhere in the world is also subject to these limits and that the immunity uh, for uh, no longer applies. Uh, I mean, this is just... <laughs> Uh, amazing to say the least here and uh, let me take I want to take and those of you that are watching on live stream here I need to pull up another article here for you on this and let me just just bear with me just a moment here um, as I as I as I bring this out out for you it, it is um, I've got in front of me here, now you guys are not seeing this on live stream as of yet, but I have the, uh, the apostolic lecture issue, issue, the motto propria of the Supreme Pontiff Francis. Now that's what they called him. Now notice he's called this, it was the Supreme Pontiff. I have that on a different computer here. 
Uh, so let me let me see if I can't find that for you here so you guys can also uh, that you will be able to see this as well. It's very important that you're able to see this and understand what's going on. Um, and I know I actually navigated to it here. Here's, here we go. I've got it now. It's going to be coming up for you here in just one second. Just bear with me here. You have to go through several different sites to get to this here. And all right, you guys are able to see this now. And, and, and I do apologize. Uh, we're, we're using live stream. We have a paid version of this, but I have not yet learned how to make your resolution clear. I will be working on that and to, to get it out there for you guys. Let's take a look at here. Apostolic letter at issue, the motto uh, proprio. And uh, this is, uh, as it says, of the supreme, notice that right there, of the supreme pontiff Francis. Uh, supreme, that makes that man uh, greater than any other pontiff there ever was. On the jurisdiction of judicial authority of the Vatican City State in criminal matters. In our times, the common good is increasingly threatened by tra uh, trans uh, transnational organized crime, the improper use of the markets and of the economy as well as by terrorism. It is therefore necessary for the international community to adopt adequate legal instruments to prevent and counter criminal activities by promotional international judicial corporation on criminal matters and ratifying numerous international conventions in this area and acting also on behalf of the Vatican City State, the Holy See has constantly maintained that such agreements are effective means to prevent criminal activities that threaten human dignity, the common good, and peace. And by the way, the common good, isn't that interesting? Um, so in other words, anything that they deem that is not for the common good uh, certainly is going to be dealt with. And a, and, and a view to renewing the apostolic see's commitment to cooperate to these ends by means of the apostolic letter issued motto propria to establish that the, uh, the competent judicial authorities of Vatican City shall also exercise penal jurisdiction over crimes committed against the security, the fundamental interest of the uh, patrimony of the Holy See. Is, is, anybody, is anybody paying attention to what this is saying here? <laughs> I mean, really, anybody really seriously paying attention to what's being said in this? I mean, this, this is, is absolutely astounding to no end, if you ask me. Um, oh, my gosh. Let me, let me bring you back. Those that are catching this on live stream here, let me just bring you back to this letter here. Um, so they have... They, it, so the, the, the competent judicial authorities of the Vatican State shall also exercise penal jurisdiction. All right. Now, the motto pro, uh, proprio is Lynn stated in there after she looks up on the Vatican uh, uh, website there to see what their definition of it is. Is this the most supreme authority over every government there is in the world? You guys have been looking for a political antichrist, someone is, and it's also going to bring about a one world religion. And of course, everybody wants to look at it as Muslims. You know, the Muslims are doing it. They're going to have a Mahdi, and the Mahdi has been prophesied in, in the Quran. Uh, does anybody not remember who wrote the Quran? It was not. Muhammad goes off, they get him on some kind of high. You know, his own wife, Kaji, says that he's just full of demons. And they get him in these trances and stuff and they're writing, but they have him in Northern Africa with a bunch of what? A bunch of Catholic monks. And they write the, their, their, their Quran. I don't even call it a Bible. I mean, my gosh, when you, if you ever read any of it, I, I've read quite a bit of it. You know, I mean, honestly, you would think children are writing this. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, the Muslim people, they need Yeshua to be their savior. They need something that's got some truth and some, some real gospel in it. Not some watered down book handed to you by the Roman Catholic Church. Why do you think, my, my Arabic friends, those of you that are Muslims, do you not realize that everything you do is tailored after the Vatican? 
You walk around with the rosary beads, just like the Catholic people walk around with the rosary beads. You sit there and you do all these prayers. You dress your women like a bunch of nuns. You weren't the first ones to do it. This all came from the Vatican. You should tell the Pope thank you, send him a thank you letter for the Quran. It's, it's ridiculous. Anyway, crimes committed against the security. This is what the Vatican takes jur uh, jurisdiction over. Crimes committed against the security, the fundamental interest of, uh, or the patrimony of the Holy See. Do you realize that when I speak against the Pope, that in their, I guess in their eyes is going to be considered a crime, and they have that right to do so. Maybe that's why my computer blowed up when I plugged it in. Unbelievable. And keep in mind, I know there's some people might say, well, you know, Brother Steve, you went, to, you went to Europe, you're using a different type of electricity. We have, and I have used this one for a long time, one of the best converters for American electricity, works on all the other things with no problem. Plug in this computer, I mean, it was ridiculous the way it happened. Anyway, crimes referred to in city state law no, number uh, 8 uh, of 11 July 2013 containing uh, supplementary norms on criminal law matters. Uh, now, I have no idea what number 8 is. Uh, doesn't seem to be here. It says also in Vatican City State Law number 9 on 11 2013 containing amendments to the criminal code and the criminal procedure code. Uh, when such crimes are committed by persons preferred to in paragraph 3 below in the exercises of their function. Number C, any other crime whose prosecution is required by international agreement ratified by the Holy See if they perpetrate is, is physically present in the ter territory of the Vatican City State has not been extra extradited. Um, did you notice that? <laughs> prosecution is required by an international agreement. Oh my God. Okay, goes on here. The crimes uh, referred to in paragraph 1 are to be judged pursuant to the criminal law in force in Vatican uh, City State at the time of their commission without uh, prejudice of the general principles of the legal systems on temporal application of criminal laws. Now remember, I said to you, the, the, uh, the flag, the, the Vatican flag that has the two keys on there represent that they have temporal and spiritual dominant global powers. It was stated to us there when we were in Rome at the Vatican that they claim this, they believe it, this was their own official statement. They hold temporal powers, which means they are over all governments of the entire world, as he calls himself the Supreme Pontiff. Um, so it goes on in uh, number two here. The crimes referred to in paragraph one are one judge pursuant to the criminal law uh, force in Vatican City State at the time their commission without prejudice, we just read that one, I'm sorry. Number three, for the purpose of Vatican criminal law, the following persons are deemed public officials. Uh, members, officials, and personnel of the various organs of the Roman Curia and institutions connected to it. Papal uh, legates and diplomatic personnel of the Holy See. Those persons who are serve as representatives and managers and directors, as well as the persons who are de facto manage or exercise control over the entities uh, directly dependent on the Holy See and listed in the registry and canon uh, judicial uh, per persons kept the government of the Vatican City State. In any other holding, an administrator or judicial mandate in the Holy See, permanent or temporary paid to an up, okay. Um, wow. What I would like to get to back to here, and, um, you know, I realize this, this by the way, this, this is a two-year-old document, but it's important for you guys to be aware of this. Um, let's take real quick here. Get you back to... I want to take you guys, I want to show you another article here in regards to this here. Let me bring this one out for you. It's called the Gold Shield Alliance, Freedom in Action, uh, Papal Decree of July 11, 2013. 
says on here, on the jurisdiction of the ju judicial authorities of the Vatican City State and criminal matters, in other times the common good is increasingly threatened by transition of organized crime, the improper use of the markets and the economy as well as by terrorism. It is therefore necessary for the international community to adopt adequate legal, they're just quoting from the document itself right here in this article here. Well, that's actually the entire thing is the quotes on there. Uh, they put in red here though, um, this is in section, this is in part three, section B, and I want to read these with you. Notice what it says here. Again, those that are watching the live stream, you can see this in red. Former private officials exempt from the law are now within the law's dictates and are held liable, a.k.a. public servants. Let's read the whole thing, the part in black as well. For the purpose of the Vatican criminal law, the following persons are deemed public officials. Former private officials exempt from law are now within the laws of dictates and are held liable, a.k.a. public servants. A. Members, officials, and personnel of the various organs uh, of the Roman Curia and the institutions connected to it. Worldwide corporations, all individuals, trusts, and corporations pursuant to their birth certificate. Um, number B. Papal uh, legates and diplomatic persons of the Holy See. That happens to include the Pope's governors, the churches, the people, the trust, all the people in the birth trust through the Roman Curia, the governing body of the Vatican. C. Those persons who serve as uh, representatives, managers, or directors, as well as persons who even de facto manage or exercise control over the entities, which are public servants, uh, directly dependent on the Holy See, trust beneficiaries, and listed in the registry through birth certificates, and canonical ju ju uh, jurisdictional persons, legal fiction represented by your birth certificate, all caps name. And by the way, what that's speaking of there is when you, you'll notice on a birth certificate, your name is in all capital letters. That is what constitutes uh, the legality of your name being a, uh, a legal, you become a, you become a little corporation of your own by the Vatican, kept by the government or the Vatican City State. D, any other persons building an administrative or judicial mandate in Holy See, the permanent or temporary paid up, unpaid irrespectively of that person's seniority. That's all public servants. Notice how they reworded that. They're, they're actually quoting to you from this very Vatican document that we were looking at just a moment ago, um, which brings in everyone around the world. The, uh, the jurisdiction referred to in paragraph one com comprises also the administrative liability of the, ju of the uh, uh, ju 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 judicial Persons arising from crimes is regulated by Vatican City state law. That's public servants are now liable for crimes against humanity. When the same matters are prosecuted in other states, the provisions in the force in Vatican City state on concurrent ju uh, jurisdiction shall apply. Um, let's drop down in verse, uh, excuse me, in um, section six, the content of the article 23 of law number CXIX of 21st November 1987, which approves the judicial order of Vatican City State remains in force. This I decided uh, I, and established anything to the contrary notwithstanding. I, re, I established that this apostolic letter is issued moto proprio on his own impulse. I remember that's what that means, on his own impulse. Will be uh, promulgated by its publication in Lo Observatore Romano, entering into force on the 1st of September of 2013. Uh, given in Rome at the, uh, at the Apostolic Palace on the 11th of July, 2013, first, uh, first of my pontificate. So, friends, if you have any understanding of what we're looking at, this to me is a clear indication that the Pope of Rome is actually taking the, the legal authority over the entire world. And we have seen, since he has done this, we have seen since then, uh, him taking authority in Israel, uh, coming in there. There was no waste of time. We, had, we saw even back in 2013, there were already arguments over the fact that the Pope of Rome was coming to Israel and that he was planning a communion service there on, the, on Mount Zion in the place known as the Last Supper or the Upper Room. And 
He fulfilled biblical prophecy in doing that, as we've spoke about many times before in the book of Obadiah. He fulfilled that prophecy about that they would continually, uh, they would drink on my holy mountain and, and they will continually drink. Um, and it's in the, in Hebrew, it's in the masculine plural, showing that during that first communion service on Mount Zion, it would only be done by men. The continuing to drink is a gender inclusive. They do it continually afterwards. Uh, it's a very serious matter friends, what's going on uh, in, in Israel right now. Uh, he is showing his world dominance. He's coming to the United States in September of this year, addressing both houses of Congress. They are addressing him as, uh, uh, as, as the Holy Father, the Holy See. Um, he is being awarded the greatest titles of any, any politician, king, monarch, potentate that there's ever been. He is being made the royal man of the hour over the entire earth. Uh, this is what should have been done when Yeshua came to Israel back 2,000 years ago. But it was, he was never accepted that way. It's one of the reasons why I say the Antichrist himself, being that he has to be a, a man that is like Christ. Again, anti in Latin is vicar. Okay, so he is the anti Christo. He is the vicar of Christ. Okay, and that's exactly what the Pope of Rome claims to be. So why is anybody looking for someone else? It's beyond me that people are still looking for someone else when he in his own papal decree has now told you that he is over all of the world's governments. Uh, he is calling for a one world order. He's calling for a one world monetary system. Uh, he is coming to address the United Nations. No government, no nothing is greater or higher than the Pope of Rome at this point on this earth. And, uh, of course, the, the Jews are looking for the Mashiach to come, and they know that he will rule the nations with a rod of iron. What do you think the Antichristo is doing? The Antichrist himself, he wants to rule the nations with a rod of iron. He's making the laws right now to show you that he has that authority. He's got the rod in his hand, and he's smiting the people to make you obey. It's only going to get worse. Here we are, 2015, we're two years later. Uh, the anniversary of that, by the way, is coming up very soon for the two-year anniversary of his decree there. So it's kind of interesting that in September, all these different things that he is stating is going to be uh, going on all over the world, uh, especially in America, the United Nations, and addressing that. We're going to see other also, a Micah 4 be fulfilled very soon too, where the Jews will be evicted from different parts of Jerusalem, forced to go out into the fields, and then God will eventually deliver his people from the rest of it. Um, let me show you a little bit more what's written here. I think it's really important for you guys to see it. Those of you watching on live stream will be able to see the article itself. Um, it says the synopsis of, of this right here, of the church people trust, uh, church equals people equals trust, says the Vatican created a world trust using the birth certificate to capture the value of each individual's future pro, uh, productive energy. Each state and province and country and the flat monetary system contributes to their people's value to this world trust identi identified by their social security number. This is what uh, Lynn wrote in her own article. Um, so it says, maintained in the Vatican registry, corporations worldwide, individuals become corporation, uh, corporate fictitious fic fictions through their birth certificate and are connected to the Vatican through law. Vatican to crown a bar uh, to laws to judge to people and through money, Vatican birth, birth accounts value the IMF to treasury, the Federal Reserve to banks to people, loan equals to judges. Um, administration and sheriffs for the confiscation. Um, it, th this is just so serious, friends. It is beyond understanding just how serious this is. Um, and there's more here in this article here. I'm going to post both these articles on our Israeli News Live Facebook page here. Um, but it's something that you need to definitely, you need to read the rest of this to see. Uh, I, I like to say that when we look at this here, to me, uh, this is, the Pope of Rome has identified himself as the Antichrist by his own actions. And uh, Lynn, by the way, wrote the article here on July 24th, 2015. The article's only been up for 24 hours. 
Um, and Lynn's, she's really good about digging and looking for things. Uh, God bless her for, for, for putting this up. Um, it is very, very important. And the time will come very soon where they're not going to allow me to speak the way that I do. Um, you know, it, it's, it's coming to that very rapidly. We're going to take in some of these messages. I would like to, I, I don't have one. I'd like to get a multi-disc uh, recorder or DVD recorder to where you can get, I think you can get them where they're stacked like 10 of them and we can burn DVDs off and send those out to you guys. We'll, do, we'll send them out free of charge uh, to the people because we want you to have some of this in, in your hands so that when the time comes and we cannot speak to you, you'll be able to go back, refer to the things, especially teachings that we'll be doing as well on this. So God bless you all. Thank you for watching. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.